I have been working for some time on the project of producing high-quality homemade vodka, and it's clear to me that continuous distillation is the best way to do it. It is curious, therefore, that there is very little information online from the experience of others who have tried this. I was puzzled by this lack of information, but nevertheless persevered with experimentation until I developed a satisfactory process. When I had, I sought to share my experience, hence this channel, and also joined internet sites where home distillers communicate. It was then that I understood one of the reasons why there is so little information online about continuous distillation. It is a taboo subject among home distillers. Not that continuous distillation itself is taboo. It is that the continuous nature of the process inevitably means that the still will be left for most of the time unattended. My still will typically operate for several months at a time, and I will check on it to record parameters, swap out receiving jars or whatever, for a couple of minutes about twice a day. And it's this practice of leaving it unattended that is taboo. You can understand why. Virtually all home distillation is done with a pot still, and leaving a pot still unattended is pretty dangerous. It requires attention to set up, to take cuts and to shut down. With a large volume of hot liquid, electric heaters of multiple kilowatts, rapid production of flammable alcohol vapour, and all manner of things can go wrong, such as boiling over, failure of cooling water flow, vapour leaks, alcohol spills on the floor, sparks, etc. But a continuous still is not like that. It contains no more than 10 mils of hot liquid, uses tens rather than thousands of watts, produces vapour slowly and does not depend on water cooling. There are a couple of points of potentially dangerous failure, specifically the flash boiler and the preheater, but we design these as we would design other systems that are intended to operate hot and unattended, such as cooking appliances or domestic hot water systems, which are made to fail safe, with layers of protection against overheating. When such systems do fail, it's usually because of failure of one of these protection systems. For example, when a hot water immersion heater fails, it's not usually the heating element itself, but rather the thermostatic controller. And it's usually not the thermostat itself either, but rather the overheat protection part of it. The same is true with continuous stills. They have layers of protection against overheating. When they fail, it's often because one of these layers of protection has shut it down. So, for example, in the steam generator flash boiler, there's a thermal fuse attached to the outside of the boiler so that any malfunction that leads to the boiler overheating results in the still shutting down. I have had failures from thermal fuses blowing, but I have never had a hot failure. So I believe that continuous home stills can be designed and built to run safely unattended. However, this view will gain no traction in the more general home distilling community, which has two consequences. Firstly, if you do use continuous distillation, you'll be shunned by that community. And secondly, they're not much help anyway because they have no experience of it. So if you do it, you'll have to console yourself with the knowledge that you alone are in a position to produce homemade vodka that's competitive with the finest commercially available brands.